So I never had thought about playing golf and never took the time to even consider being blind. I just, I'm totally blind. I wasn't in my mind. So my son-in-law married my, my daughter but one year in 1998 at Christmas time, gave me three golf clubs. And I said, oh, I was so disappointed. I said, why did he give me golf clubs? <laughs> I can relate. And he had seen, the, uh, seen a few people talk about golf and why golf. And he decided to take me to the driving range. And I was really reluctant. I didn't want to go. He took me to the driving range. I think the first six, six balls did miss most of the people there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad experience. I, I hit the ground a lot. All the things you do when you're new at golf, and I had no clue. And uh, when I went home, I said, did not take me back. And boy, was I serious. I did not want to go back and play golf. And then he was, he was really good at it. He was persistent, and we went back and played um, different times until I was able to play on the course. First of all, thanks for having us here. Sure. Uh, my wife, Judy, uh, we're on the verge of 45 years together. Um, she has, of course, been my wife and my partner, and now she's my golf coach. She, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But um, and, uh, and she's, of course, we'd like to say, well, she's our eyes wherever we go. Uh, I was in the golf industry for 35 years, so I, uh, you know, was always around golf. I grew up playing golf. I, I loved golf. It was something I discovered young that, that I could do. And uh, in, in sports, I guess in, in both grade, you know, junior high and high school, uh, you have team sports, and if you're not quite good enough, you sometimes you ride the bench. But in golf, if you're good enough, you play. And so I found that out pretty quick. And, and the gift that I had uh, allowed me to make the teams and, and play on some really fine uh, teams in, uh, through my career. And then uh, I found golf, uh, jobs in golf. And uh, so I spent 35 years. Um, at the end, I was, uh, had been a salesman for Spalding Sports Worldwide and was a traveling salesman. So you can imagine starting to have vision problems affecting a traveling salesman. So uh, when I uh, had to leave my company and give up my job, uh, I honestly, in 35 years, I had never, ever heard of flying golf. I had no idea that people with the vision problems would play golf. And so Judy found some organizations and that's how we met Phil and uh, began uh, well, for now 14 years and now we've been playing blind golf. Uh, I wanted to tell you a story about Phil real quick. Sure. Because I, the first time I played golf with Phil, I, uh, we're playing in a, a tournament and he's a, he's a big star in this business. And so people come out to, to film him and to talk to him and things like that. And. Uh, <clears throat> So we're on the first tee, and he's telling me he's real nervous because he, he says there's a, a camera out there, and the camera's filming him, and, uh, and he's real nervous about making a good swing and hit it. So he, he tees the ball up, and with all of his great skill, he's able to barely nudge the ball off the tee. <laughs> <coughs> and so, yeah, about, <laughs> about three inches. So anyway, I get up to hit, and I knock it into the woods off to the left. And uh, so, so Phil hits a three wood. He, he then gets a, a stone still on the on the teeing ground, and he hits a three wood down the fairway. I have to pitch the ball out into the to the uh, fairway. Phil then hits. I, I don't know whether it was a long iron or it was a long shot, and he hits the next shot on the green. And so then I pitch, you know, hit my ball up on the green. So now we're actually on the green at the same number. Remember, he started with one that started about. <laughs> three inches off the tee. And so then he proceeds to drain his putt, make four, and I two putt and make five. So I, <laughs> that was my introduction to Phil Blackwell. I thought that was fantastic. And it's, it's been a blossoming relationship since then. Yeah, <laughs> I can't beat him. Could you kind of walk us through what goes on between the relationship between the golfer and the coach as you approach that first tee and maybe you know work your way into the green from there? Maybe. Maybe uh, Phil can take us from tee to tee to the fairway, and, and Bruce can bring us in from the fairway to the green. Oh, which one's harder to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Um, when we go to the 
see, uh, usually my wife and I, she's coaching me. Um, of course, having my driver, we walk out side by side, and she she says, of course, prior to this, we have an idea of talking about the hole and what's out there. And nowadays, we have GPS in our phones that talk and tell us the bunker is 220 yards away, which is much better than relying on anybody else but me. So we go out. She looks at the, down the fairway, I stand beside her, and then I turn facing her uh, on her uh, right shoulder, facing her face on that side. So she's still looking the right way, and I sort of get an alignment in my head how I'm standing that's close to being aligned with going down the fairway. And then she will take the club as I hold it out, and I'll, I'll hold it out in both hands, and she'll sort of back up and aim the club, and as she aims the club, I move my body and she'll aim it to where she thinks it's a safe place to hit it. And once we get that done, um, I take a practice swing. And then she places the ball down, and she will then take the club and put it behind the ball. And she'll say, she'll say clear, because if she doesn't say clear, sometimes you can swing and the coach will still be too close to it. So, <laughs> you know, I hit your coach. so when she says clear, then it's on me, and I usually try to swing within the next three Four seconds. If I don't swing in the next three or four seconds, I've probably got a bad, bad shot coming up. So I take my swing, and if we have a good shot, it goes down the fairway, and we're still speaking, then we get to get the car. <laughs> <laughs> then ride down to the next shot, and it's the same pr uh, process. Um, it, it's deciding just what is the, the best route to take to get to the hole, what's the safest, and I rely on her to tell me the line, and we'll decide. And then we decide what clubs, and not knowing what my distance is, with each club, I'll, I'll select the club that is appropriate, hopefully. And then we'll do the same process. And once it's aligned, and I, the club is behind the ball, then I take a swing. And if that works out good, you, you know, I guess a person could play 72. <laughs> it's never exactly right, but this is how the process works. So from that point in, I guess it's over to you, Bruce. Well, I'll just add that. Uh, Judy is a, likes to study golf courses, and so uh, not only prior to it, you know, today with the internet, you can go on the internet and she can find golf courses that we're going to play. Uh, we also have a thing called Sky Caddy, which you download golf courses that gives you pictures of the holes that you're going to play. Uh, she actually has books going back all those years to golf courses we played all over the world. And so when we maybe we'll play a second. Time, well, then she'll pull her book. Uh, you've seen the caddies on the tour, sure. how they work, and that's the way the, the way she is. So she studies the the, the holes, <coughs> and then she tells me things she knows that I probably need to know. She doesn't tell me there's an out of bounds over on the left side, or there's water in front of me, or uh, things like that. She'll she'll tell me things that are real definite about uh, direction. And and so then she gives me yardage and things, and then I pick the club, and as Phil does, she lines me up, and then I take a swing at it, and as I said, she's then got to find it. So <laughs> that's her job. She's got to keep her eyes on it. Yeah, she's got to keep her eyes on it. So I'm, I get it, she finds it. And that's the way we work. And with the putting, is it the same type <clears throat> of alignment, or is it well, putting I'll, a lot I'll of I'll start field? on that, because putting, uh, there, there's something I always tell sighted players that I would do. If, I mean, I think they ought to do you know, that I would do, and I'd, if I could get my sight back, I, I would step off my chips and my putts, and Phil does the same thing. Uh, they walk them, and that, after time, becomes a, a program. It becomes something in your mind that says 14 steps mean something to you. It may not mean something to you the first day you do it, but it will mean something 10 years from now. <laughs> uh, Judy uh, is, can notice the uh, subtle changes in the green and the undulations, and she's become an excellent, you know, a reader of putts and gives me uh, good ideas about where we're going to hit the ball. And then, of course, in the same way, she sets up and lines me, and then we can stroke it. And, and on the can't read the green thing, I, I just going to mention that one year I played with Bruce and we counted my putts. He, not, he, he didn't know about it. I counted the putts I was playing. I played, uh, I don't want to be bragging, but 21 putts on one of the games we played, which which I read, I know at least three of those. 
Just <laughs> <laughs> he takes credit for some. <laughs> yeah, you have to give all our credit to our coaches. They do. They do a great job. We, yeah, we, we make the strokes, of course, but they they uh, they have to get it going in the right direction. It's definitely a true partnership. Yes. I mean, we get to blame. Yeah. I've had a lot of opportunity to. I took was I was amazed because it was so new to me. Uh, so that in itself, I guess, was a very big accomplishment for me. Uh, I could discuss my, my stats. I sound like I'd be bragging, so we'll just stop there. <laughs> Bruce? Yeah, I think uh, the World Championship of 2006, uh, Judy and I got to go to uh, Tokyo, Japan. And uh, we, uh, I think, too, uh, we, what was funny is that they, they did a forced vision uh, uh, assessment, and it turned out that I wasn't a B3 anymore, I was a B2, I'd been playing as a B3, and so then I, they moved me prior to the tournament into B2, and I, and what was amazing to me was is that the competition was even stiffer in B2, uh, so anyway, we're in, we're in Japan, and uh, we get to play these absolutely beautiful get to the last hole of the tournament and I can make a par, I think it was for 77, right? Anyway, I end up hitting in the bunker, coming out of the bunker. You know, well, I think, well, if I shoot 77, I'm, this would be a good chance to win. I'm, Ooh. And you get all nervous, you get in the bunker, through the, the trap and into the back trap, and right. you know, I end up make, making a, a, a triple bogey and shooting uh, 80. And it turns out that the guy that we were playing against, a real great kid from Australia, uh, he, he shoots an 86 and I shoot an 80 and he was ahead of me by two the day before, so I ended up winning that four. So professional golfers pay their caddies 10% of all their winnings? <laughs> I'm curious what you pay your coaches for all the work that they do. Oh, I pay back every day. <laughs> My, my wife is also, also chief financial officer, so she gets all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <clears throat> yes. I know in, in um, the PGA, oftentimes uh, players make major tweaks to their swings. Have you all made any major changes to the way in which you swing or hit the ball? <clears throat> for some reason, it's a continuing process. I, I don't know. <laughs> the good ones you've seen for some reason work good last time, they're not working the next time you go play and compete and you start questioning and you pick up a little something that'll get you by for, the, for that day. So I do change, you know, different days, different years, a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. I've, I've had the, I guess I've had the most trouble uh, in the progress of the, of the blindness as, you st as, as I've lost sight over the years, it has caused a great deal of anxiety, okay? I mean, we're, in fact, I've, I've heard some of our blind golfers tell me that, it, that when they finally did lose their sight, which is terrible to say, but it took a lot of the anxiety away because now they're, they're, they're not searching for the ball anymore. So some of that's happened to me. And when that happens, I, uh, you know, our first reaction is to go see if we can't find somebody to help us or, <coughs> But it, it's it's not easy for a, a PGA teacher or a, anybody out to, to unless you've worked with handicapped and vision impaired people. It's not easy to teach them because you, you don't have any clue what they're what they're going through. So most of ours is just we've worked through it, uh, and the changes that have been made over the years. Age, you know, we're not as long as we used to be. It's tall. <laughs> we're just as, <laughs> we're just as tall, but we don't hit it as well. Uh, so that's all those changes come in, and you wonder what happened. You know, just uh, if you work through it. Now I know with the, with the tournament coming up here in a, in a couple of weeks, one of the things that that was wonderful to see last year was the clinic that 
you both hosted, uh, kind of teaching the game of golf to other visually impaired people that were there. Do you also do that th throughout the country at different clinics? And can you talk a little bit about that experience, about kind of paying it forward? Well, I, <laughs> I, uh, yes, I mean, uh, Judy was a, a, she was a school teacher for 35 years. And uh, we actually worked with the first team here in San Antonio uh, to develop some curriculum for uh, teaching or, or having a clinic, let's put it that way. Um, and so that's what we incorporated into, into this one here. And we do it in San Antonio. We do it uh, when we're in Bayou, we're going to, I think we're going to do one in uh, Fort Worth again this year. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we've been doing it for a while. And, we did it more a few years ago than we've been doing it recently. Um, the thing about golf, it seems to be, and Phil's a perfect example, that you don't know unless you try it whether that gift is inside of you. And he found out that, that he had this gift. And so I guess that's what clinics really are all about. And I, and I last year I noticed some people who were a part of the clinic they had the ability, and I don't know what they did with it. I can't, we're not following up on it, but I do know that that uh, some of them did have that that gift. And I just, uh, you know, and even all the, all the people here, if you think you might want to try a sport, I think golf is terrific. Uh, it's very, very hard, but it, uh, you can enjoy it and, and not be real good at it and still enjoy it, but you can also find out if you have a gift for it. Just always amazed at the number of good people that uh, find it out. Find Do you have any other tips like that, walking the steps, because that's very helpful. Yeah, I mean, real solid tips like that. And also, if you're playing on a regular golf course, not in a tournament, um, how do you deal with the pace of play issues? Or do you just, or is it not hard for you to keep the pace of play? It's a little hard for us to keep pace of play, and it's always something we're kind of dealing with. I, if I had anything to say about pace of play and with us being blind and getting out of the golf course where I am or anywhere else, what I've learned is to tell my wife, get the car and just drive wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we, we spend a lot of time getting to the ball. And I, I try to make sure that we, we take that time and, and really actually get to the ball as quick as possible and then use that time a little slower pace and then once that's done, I don't, I don't hang around. And this may not, not sound like very much time, but on the golf course, it is a lot of time uh, getting to the ball and getting it, getting set up. And that's what I, I really, am, I really think about a lot is I want to make sure I'm not wasting time not playing golf. <coughs> so really, I save a lot of time by doing what I'm saying, although it makes it being funny. But this is a serious thing when we compete. So I'm certainly, once I've hit the ball, I'm not gonna stand around and just think about it more. I really pick up my pace and get to the next shot. And that does, over 18 holes, it really uh, saves a lot of time. Because a lot of scoffers and the scoffers I compete with, uh, they all wanna just hang around and have a good time and think about it a little more. And that's what takes up more time, I think. Um, then you have more time to devote to the swing and, and everything else. Yeah. I, uh I don't think you hit any better shots uh, playing slow. I mean, you just don't. And uh, I had uh, one of the first tournaments I ever played in, a guy came up to me and said that I could be bad, but I couldn't be slow. A good player, older kid, said you can be bad, but you don't be slow. So in golf, you do have a time limit. You're supposed to get to that ball. You're supposed to make execute that swing within a about 30 or 40 seconds and go chase it and, and get back at it. The other thing that uh, could be done in a competition is to limit the number of strokes. And they do this in, uh, in some high school tournaments I know about. Uh, we actually put a stroke limit on our, on our players. It's cut our time down from six hours plus to five hour, less than five hours in our golf tournaments and that makes it an enjoyable day. But I'm just saying you don't make you don't get any better by fretting over a swing or you know just get your player there and 
make that stroke and get back to your, and get on with it. Because that's the, uh, as far as any other <coughs> techniques that we use, uh, I mean, the only thing we're really lacking is the eyesight. Uh, we're physically ha ha capable, so our coaches are there to give us that feedback on how far we are, where we're aimed at, if, and if Judy's happy with me, then she's usually aiming me at the target. And if, if she's not, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, just finding it. So that's really what our coach does, uh, is, is give us that kind of information. Frustrating spots, or maybe the coaches could tell us a little better. <laughs> What's frustrating? But I'm just curious to hear some of your I don't know. Frustrating one. moments in the sport. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Please do. Uh, this is before. Now I'm going to say this too. This is before Judy became my caddy. Uh, playing one of my first tournaments, and uh, my friend uh, lines me up on what looks like a flag. About he says it's about 200 yards away. A red flag. I hit the shot, and when we get up there. It's a few feet red fire hydrant. <laughs> so I, I, said, I said, why are we here? And he says, well, the green used to be here. Because <laughs> he played that golf course before. And um, So anyway, I told him, I said, who's the one that needs, needs uh, glasses? For <laughs> that's, that's, I think the frustrating thing is uh, the other one for us is playing the wrong ball. If we don't Check it, you know, make sure we're playing the right ball. We've had that happen. Yeah, what else you got? Oh, uh, well, that's that, that might be worth a minute, but it, the golf is still the same frustrations, I think, for sighted people as for us. I, and not, my wife may not agree, but most of the time I try to just take it lightly. And all the bad things that's going on, I just try to just think of something positive I can get out of being out here. And I really do. I try to just throw off the bad and just be, try to enjoy it. Uh, at the frustrating times, I think I'm like all golfers. I said, how in the world could I do such a thing? And then I, I try to throw that off. But it, it can be difficult at times. We can get in some terrible situations off on the sidelines. And you wonder just how you're going to get out of it. And I guess at those times, I try to become more lighthearted, but you can tell that I, I seem to be making a, uh, doing that good down here. Uh, but it, it, it's not, I don't, I guess it's the same. We just try to take it easy and just go to the next hole and just throw a last hole away and start all over, fresh and clean. And my wife wanted to mention that my coach took me to a golf course to play. Um, before the time to play, and there was not anybody around, he said, well, here's the, uh, Putting green, would you like to putt uh, for a few minutes? And I said, sure. And he walked over. He said, well, I don't really see any flags anywhere. I said, that's okay, or, or any holes. He said, I said, just lay something down, and we'll just putt toward a ball or something. So we're doing that for about 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden, somebody out way off out of the back said, are you guys going to play or what? <laughs> we're on the 18th hole. <laughs> 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 so that actually did happen. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you had a question in the back then. No, okay. Jocelyn. So do y'all watch um, the national and international golf tournaments? Oh. And if so, what are your thoughts and predictions for the Masters? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> my hopes is, would be more my thoughts. Uh, I guess uh, I'm left-handed, so you know, I tend to lean toward Phil Mickelson hoping that he'll have a good week. Uh, that would just personally be me. And, uh, that, that, you know, a lot of things change since uh, Tiger's not there. As you know, it's a little lower expectations on money uh, as far as how much money it will draw for the community. That's who I, my favorite is. Bruce? I like, uh, well, Judy and I like Patrick Reed. And the reason we like him is because his wife caddies for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, she's out right now on maternity leave, I think. <coughs> but they claim that she's going to be right back there carrying that bag as soon as she, uh, she gets back. And that kid is just, uh, he's the one that had the, you might have heard that he says he's now one of the top 
five players in the world. He may very well be. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying it. Uh, good, good for him. I think we have time for one or two more questions, and then I'll invite Tony up to give us some closing remarks. I'm curious. Uh, you had a hole in one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When I was 13. <laughs> <laughs> up here to give us some closing uh, remarks. So thank you both very much. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Hey guys, how are you? Hi, Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. No excuse, but there's total gridlock out there. Well, I'm glad you're here. Well, let me give you my frustration is, uh, and you guys might appreciate this, uh, my wife's a golfer, and we were golfing about maybe three years, two years, and we're out on a golf course with some friends, and uh, she hits this ball, and it's a par three, and uh, we get up to the hole, and uh, we can't find her ball. Well, she got a hole in one. Mm -hmm. okay. And then about three years ago, on July 3rd, we're playing at Bear Trap in Bethany Beach, and all of a sudden she hits this ball, and we can't find it, it's in the cup. So she's got two hole in ones. And the most frustrating part is her name is on this plaque at the clubhouse. And so every time I go in there, I kind of say, well, you know, you got the wrong name. You got to scratch out Lynn. It's really, my nickname is Tony. So it won't work. So that's my frustration. So every time we get out there, she goes, ah, I'm not going to do well today. And my fear is if she gets another one, I don't know what's going to happen in my life. I'm not going to be able to sleep at night or give up golf. But, you know. uh, I do apologize for being late, but Guillermo, fantastic job. I mean, you. I mean, you can do this all the time. You know. uh, but yesterday, uh, yesterday, Phil, we had a great time. We were on uh, the Dave Lucas show, which is taped for, he does the golf show for Channel 7, Channel 8. And, and Phil did a great job, and, and uh, Dave is a great interviewer, and he was really asking some very good questions, and similar to today. And so uh, today we're going to be interviewed by the Washington Post at Woodmont Country Club. Bob McCarthy, who's a well-known uh, reporter, is going to do a featured article <coughs> on us, uh, and uh, not us, these guys, and uh, they want to see them in action. They want to ask the same kind of questions. And I think from our standpoint, this is a great opportunity for us uh, in this region to really support visually impaired uh, individuals to play golf. Uh, our clinic last year, we had about 14. This year, we're over 20, 20, 25. So that means more people are gonna be coming out for the clinic. Uh, we invite everybody to the clinic. It's fantastic to see uh, individuals who've never really touched a golf club and out there, and last year the experience was tremendous. Uh, so that's gonna to happen today, and on Friday, uh, we're gonna be on ESPN Sports with Andy Poland. Uh, and so this year, we we're ahead of getting people very interested in Shot in the Dark, which is gonna really be fantastic for us. Uh, so all of this has to do with these two guys here, and we have our third last year was with us, but we can't thank you enough for coming back again. And uh, taking a taxi cab has been a real experience, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, but today was better, I hope. Yeah, yeah today oh, yeah. was better. Okay. Today was great. Uh, okay. But um, I want to thank all of you for your support. And uh, we have a great committee that's been supporting us. Uh, we've been doing really well with the 
uh, uh, Samantha Bellant, who is one of the co-chairs uh, from Smart CEO. Smart CEO has given us a publication. Uh, I don't know if you saw that last month, uh, but she's out there selling memberships and uh, <coughs> sponsorships. So if anybody in the room has not sponsored something, there could be something available uh, for you. So we look forward to seeing you on uh, May 16th. Uh, but on May 17th, we're celebrating our 114th year. So we're going to have a big birthday cake. They won't allow us to shoot fireworks off, but we would have done that if they allowed us. And so uh, thank you for coming. And uh, they'll be back here next year, right, guys? If you want us, we'll be here. Of course we want you. <laughs> well, thank you. Opportunity that's given to people that are blind or vision impaired, every opportunity, a doorway you open, you can't imagine how much that means because you go away and you can just take that next step and somebody just give you that little helping hand that I did not have, unfortunately. It just means so much to these folks that do this. It, it just thrills me to be around other people that are blind or vision impaired and they hold a golf ball and never seen one in their life. And that, that is such an incentive sometimes for people to just take that next step. And that, that is dear to me in my heart. I just, I just wanted to say that before we quit. I'm not trying to sell anything. <laughs> it's just personal to me.